We are at the peak of second quarter earnings, meanwhile, overall. Earnings are slightly lower than they were a year ago. Energy hit the hardest, seeing a 58% decline in profitability. But technology is still a winner, up 5% from the same time last year. And two big earnings reports we're watching this morning uh, ahead of uh, their reports after the bell tonight. That's Fitbit and Tesla coming out after the close tonight. I want to bring in Cumberland Advisors Chairman and Chief Investment Officer, David Kotak. David, good to see you. Thanks for joining us. Thank you. And you've got your fishing gear on because you're headed off to Camp Kotak, you call it. We are. We're going to Grand Lake Stream, Maine with a nice group. We're going to talk about markets and finance and the Fed and maybe catch a fish. And what about what about earnings? How would you characterize the earnings season so well, far? Well, you know, you've got a mix, as is usually the case. The energy sector, you just talked about the energy sector, really weighs on things. Commodities weighs on things. So that is a two wounded sectors. That does not refute the fact that the U.S. economy is growing. We'll see 200,000 non-farm payroll jobs on Friday, and things are getting better in the U.S. gradually and steadily. Yeah. And that's what's driving things. They, they certainly are, and of course, that's what's driving the Federal Reserve as well. Now, there's, I guess Dennis Lockhart made the comment uh, late yesterday that there will, in fact, be a rate increase in September. What do you think? Well, we're right there. Uh, David's uh, outfit reminds me that Jackson Hole is coming up at the end of the month. Janet Yellen indicated she's not going to Jackson Hole. The reason, in my opinion, is that she's seriously thinking about that rate increase in September. And, and uh, for a number of reasons, from a fundamental standpoint, we think September is a liftoff. Does that change strategy in terms of allocating money into equities? Well, we think it does, because ultimately we think that the market's going to rip on the fact that the Fed is going to be tightening for the first time in nine years. You think the market goes up? Absolutely. Absolutely, because the investors are going to say, wait a second, if the Fed is raising rates for the first time in nine years, that must mean that they're confident that the economy is doing better. Right. Once they realize the, the read-through on improved earnings, stocks are going to reflect that. You agree with that, David? He should get on the plane with me to Maine, and we'll make the bull case <laughs> together. And I got a fishing shirt, I'll loan you. you. Yes, the Fed must get away from zero. They must. The hawks want to get away from zero, and the doves want to go away from, get away from zero. The markets need to clear the front end of the yield curve, and we've got to get out of this distortion of zero interest rates, which we've had for seven years. Yeah, and, it's and time to do it. Zero rates have certainly uh, created this, you know, urge for yield in so many places, which is why you had so many hedge fund funds piling into Puerto Rico ah. debt. And that's something you've written a lot about. We have. We, uh, you know, you don't plan things. We, we have a new book, Adventures in Muniland. It was launched on Friday. By coincidence, Puerto Rico defaults on Saturday. Mm -hmm. And the book's been hot because there's a whole section on it about Puerto Rico, Puerto Rico credit. We now have a situation. You cannot name, or I challenge anybody to name, when American Samoa or Guam or the Virgin Islands right. or Puerto Rico ever failed to miss a payment. Now we have a default. Everything has changed when you don't make a payment. You can talk about credit deteriorating, but when you don't make a payment, it's a game changer. Well, we saw that. We saw that also. I would compare a little to Greece uh -huh. uh, because we, we saw similar things there. Okay, so knowing that the Fed is going to raise rates in September, do you tell strategies differently to uh, investors? What, what are you telling investors? Right well, now? what we've told our people are the stock market has done absolutely nothing in the first seven months of this year. We're right. expecting a 10 to 15 percent year-end rally with the focus on economically sensitive categories like financials and like consumer discretionary. Do you agree with that? I'm in the same place and I think the tech sector is still good. Interesting that you mm. both don't like energy, and Joe Energy is the one group that's down, and the valuations are probably more attractive than other groups. Yeah, you know, it's very volatile in the energy industry right now, right, as we look to where oil prices are and the entire sector as a whole. But I, I was interested to know why you think tech will actually continue to rise through the end of this year, since it already, in so many ways, has hit highs. The productivity gains go on from the tech sector. We get a lot of volatility in the tech sector. We focus on a name, Apple, for yeah. example, is the star. But the fact is, we are evolving a highly technical, capable world with great productivity gains. Moore's Law still works. Things are changing rapidly. 
and that will continue worldwide. This is a worldwide growth story, not captured in GDP data. And in a an, bullish story. In a 2 3% GDP world, uh, that's where the growth is. Got to find right. the growth. David, great to see you. Thanks nice so much for joining us. Good luck with the weekend. Good luck with the weekend. Camp Potok. Target